All right, question four from the midterm. Consider the arguments below. Restate them if necessary and determine their validity. And how are you going to determine their validity? Well, either by drawing a Venn diagram in these first two or creating a chain of conditional arguments in the next two. And discuss slash justify your answer as much as possible. Um, some of you guys put a lot of work down there. It was great. I gave you lots of either partial credit or full credit or whatever. Um, and some of you didn't, which was fine as long as you had the right answer. But if you didn't, it made it hard for me to give you much credit. Okay, so in this first one, we want to draw a Venn diagram. Um, the first thing, what not to do. Don't automatically just start out with this picture. I know that's what a lot of people think of when they think of Venn diagram, but this is just one specific type of Venn diagram. It's an intersecting Venn diagram. This is the case when you have things in one group, things in another group, and things in both groups. It's not the case here. In this specific case, if you read the first premise, it says having stripes is necessary for being a zebra. So if you think about zebra as this little circle right here, um, to be a zebra, you have to have stripes. You have to. So if you think of this as everything with stripes, note that zebra is completely within this circle. They're not intersecting. It's not outside of it. It's not reversed. Here's everything with stripes. One of the things with stripes is a zebra. This is the proper Venn diagram for this one. And then the second premise here says, my favorite animal has stripes. The way your book does this, I don't know that I completely agree with this, but your book takes the first premise and draws the Venn diagram. And then the second premise, it draws like a little X. My favorite animal has stripes. My favorite animal is inside this big circle right here. Where inside this big circle? I don't know. It could be right here. It could be right here. Could be right here. Anywhere inside the big circle. Um, note that it's not necessarily inside this circle. So my conclusion that my favorite animal represented by the X is a zebra is false or not valid. Um, my favorite animal has stripes, but it's not necessarily a zebra. Maybe it's a, I don't know, a tiger, right? I think tigers have stripes. Um, so this statement is not valid and a picture something like this would be perfect. Second one kind of flips it around a little bit. Same picture, having stripes is necessary for being a zebra. Okay, so if these are all the zebras, I want this entire circle to fall within the stripe circle. Whoops. Because all zebras have stripes. Premise, your favorite animal is a zebra. So your favorite animal falls in here inside the zebra circle, because it is a zebra. Up here, I was just inside the stripe circle, not necessarily inside the zebra circle. Maybe I was, maybe I wasn't, we didn't know. Your favorite animal is a zebra, it's inside the zebra circle. So the conclusion that your favorite animal has stripes is valid. Why is that valid? Because all zebras have stripes. This X right here is inside the stripe circle. It's just in a special part of the stripe circle. Valid. Um, you guys did really good on those, so maybe I'm beating that to hell. Maybe I should have done that a little bit quicker. Now we're making a chain of conditional arguments. So the idea here is you read these guys and you kind of draw arrows. If I don't sleep well, I don't sleep well, then I'll be tired. When they talked about rewriting them, I think that's what they're getting at. You could rewrite this. If I don't sleep well, then I'll be tired. If that helps you go for it. Next one, I don't sleep well whenever my child is sick. That one's a little bit tricky. That one's saying if, maybe I'll rewrite that one, if my child is sick, then I don't sleep well. The English language is a funny thing that the order that you write this is a little bit confusing. This is not saying not sleeping well implies child is sick. It's saying child is sick implies that you don't sleep well. Um, so if my child is, is sick, then I don't sleep well. Child sick, then I don't sleep well. My chain of conditional argument looks like this. And actually it'll be the same one for down here. If I don't, it's the, the premise in C is the exact same as the premise in D. What's different is the conclusion. My conclusion here says I'll be tired whenever my child is sick. That is not valid. It's hard to keep track of all this. How about conclusion? 
not valid. Why is that not valid? Because there is no arrow. I'll be tired whenever my child is sick. I want to rewrite that somewhere too. What that is saying is if my child is sick, I'll be tired whenever I screwed up. This conclusion is valid. Um, but maybe that's easier to see if I rewrite this conclusion. The conclusion says I'll be tired whenever my child is sick. That's the same as saying child, if child is sick, then I'm tired. And that's valid. There's an arrow from child sick to tired. It goes through this I don't sleep well thing, that, but that's fine. This conclusion is valid. And you can see it if you reread it like this. The next one, we got the same, this premise, if I don't sleep well, I'll be tired, fine. Same picture as I have up here. If I don't sleep well, arrow, I'll be tired. I don't sleep well whenever my child is sick. In other words, if my child is sick, then I don't sleep well. Child sick implies don't sleep well. Don't sleep well implies tired. The conclusion is my child is sick whenever I'm tired. That is not valid. And why is that valid? Or why is that not valid? Because there's no arrow from tired to sick in the above chain. I didn't bother rewriting this down here. You could rewrite it if you want. But note that tired does not imply child sick. Child sick implies tired. Maybe I'm tired because I went out last night or something. That doesn't necessarily mean my kid's sick. So that's not a valid conclusion. So really the answers here are valid, not valid, and then valid and not valid up here. And this is kind of the work justifying that. Uh, I guess that's the end of this one.